Welcome, welcome to Brunch with REC for all of for all of our friends and family and our long, long-term clients that have been supporting us for now. Coming up to year 16, believe it or not, Simos. This is six, this is 16 years deep. You and I have been doing this. Um, just want to say thank you guys. Happy New Year. If you didn't join us on the uh, on the brunch of the the first brunch of 2021. Happy New Year to, to everyone. And if you're watching the recording, make sure to still put your questions wherever you're watching this recording. Our team will definitely reach out to you. Make sure we get any questions and or concerns uh, taken care of. But Simos, I, we, I'm very excited today to talk about what happened at the end of 2020 in, in December like specifically in in certain s- suburbs of the GTA. And so we're going to go right right across the GTA and talk about all the market indicators. As usual, please let us know in the comments below, where are you signing in from today? We love, love seeing all of our friends in the West Coast getting up nice and early at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, but Simos, Let's let's get into it today, my man. Yeah, man. So I'll just quickly say good morning to the to the whole country. Good morning, REC insiders, uh, and all the the new people who are registered for the event that we haven't met before. So if you haven't seen our our silly videos before, welcome to your first silly video. Um, we're hey, we're here for yourself. You're the silly one, not me. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> let, let 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 the new people be the judge of that. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but but uh, good morning, everyone across the nation. Uh, we are here this uh, Saturday, January the 16th, uh, to try and bring you as much value as possible. Um, we've literally been having a tremendous uh, and busy week this past week in in our business development and our planning sessions. And we have some extremely um, positive things lined up for our insiders and for our group this year. Uh, Jazz has truly is redefining what, what we call the client journey and the client experience. So, so everybody who's kind of in our circle is going to experience something, um, well, uh, w- what we believe is gonna be better than we've ever done before. So yeah. uh, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna talk from an arrogant standpoint. I always thought we delivered great value and a great service. But we're uh, not but perfect. I, we're not perfect, right? And yeah. we're always trying to get better than we were last year, better than we were yeah, last but, month, but, better but, than like yesterday. So, some of those things that I saw last night, uh, I'm still um, I'm I'm still in awe of all your your hard work of this past few weeks and putting that journey together. So that's exciting, and I can speak kind of from uh, from from my camp, which is kind of the the business development and team operations. Like I've I've put together some insane training for my agents. So when when they when you come off your coffee with REC, uh, and, and every insider comes off that that call to says, okay, well I am ready to make a move the brokers that you're going to be working with uh, that we have always oversight over uh, are going to be ready to really. So I've trained them how to properly identify the best opportunities. And I went deep and I went deep, meaning how, which renovation, which location, what to look for in each market. So they're not going to be, you know, looking at each other in the car, the client and and the broker say, you know, where do we go from here? They know exactly where to go. So we're really trying to, to close that gap of the search of from three months down to a month where an investor can have confidence and the ability to, to see their broker, get qualified, get on the ground, execute, and move on to the next property. So and there's look, I mean, t- tons of exciting stuff happening. To, just, just to add to that point really quickly, Seamus, I mean, we've been saying for 16 years that the best deals in real estate are the ones that you create That's right. and 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 when we started this myself yourself and and our late great partner simon we we at that time it was just us three creating these deals identifying these deals figuring out the roi how to work perform us but now now we have an army um, of 41 41 real estate agents right across the greater toronto area and for somebody yep. who's new to us um, how we define the Greater Toronto Area really is uh, uh, kind of Hamilton, called Burlington, Hamilton, right over to 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 Uxbridge. Now, I mean, that's kind of where we're at, and that's where that's how far east we're going and to create these deals. And then we go right north to Newmarket and down to the lake. 
And so in real estate, you need to be able to create deals. What do, I, what do we mean by that? Well, if we see um, a, a bungalow that, that has above grade windows, for example, but doesn't have a basement apartment, hey, we know that we might be able to do a basement apartment in this, in this, in this property, get it for the value of a bungalow with a, just, a, j- just a one door property, but we, we've also, also partnered up with service providers that come in, legalize the whole apartment for you, get it all done for you, pretty much turnkey, but you as the investor get to take advantage of that sweat equity, sec, uh, sweat equity uh, is what we call it, and you get to take advantage of that, not someone else. And so what you and your, yourself and Bobby, uh, director of uh, uh, team operations, have been able to do to train our realtors, we've been doing this for a very long time, but now they're ready to go. And so if you're new to our world, and you don't get our emails. Maybe you just came on Facebook. Maybe you heard about the 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 the, the crazy hand waving Indian and the good good looking <laughs> chef, bald chef now uh, on purpose because he does have hair. Um, Simeon, uh, I, I want you to do us a massive favor. Just get our emails. Just get our emails. There's no obligation. We don't charge for any of that. It's quite easy. It's rec. All you got to do is go to rec insiders.com you just go to rec insiders with an s at the end dot com you put in your information there and we send out a couple of emails a month most of them are just to let you know we're doing one of these things um but we do come out with exclusive opportunities eight to ten of them uh, in terms of pre-construction projects, eight to 10 of them um, every single year. Um, but we have hundreds of other opportunities that get emailed out through multiplexes, uh, exactly what I spoke about, a bungalow, turning that into a two-door uh, apartment and so much more commercial investment. We cover kind of all of it. And so that was kind of our, our promo piece for, our, for, for, for the clients that have been with us forever. We don't do a lot of that, but we do want to make sure because now we're live on Facebook that the new people know what we do. So let's get into it, Simos. Last brunch, the first one of 2021, we spoke specifically about the Toronto, like Toronto proper, what happened in the market. So I'm going to do like a 30 second, uh, 45 second, I'm going to try to do a 30 to 45 second recap about what happened specifically in Toronto. And then what we'll start to do, and I appreciate you sharing this, Simos. Um, and then what we'll start to do is go across the other su- Parts of the GTA, uh, the Oakvilles, we're going to cover Mississauga, we're going to cover Brampton, and then we're yeah. going to end off at Durham. The reason we decided to talk about the suburbs this th- this weekend is because the what's been happening, I mean, I mean, we've been seeing very, very low uh, months of inventory, very low days on market, and massive appreciation. And a lot of it has to do with pe- people just wanting to get some bigger space. Not only from a home's perspective, but just they're not wanting to what we're seeing, the trend that we're seeing is not to be like right in the core of downtown Toronto. Now, at the start of January, we all start to see a bounce back in the condo market in downtown Toronto. But even and, in the and, sub- I, and I do and I do want to talk about that. F- finish your, your sentence. But there's two major points that I want to touch on. Don't let you forget, especially the return of downtown. For sure. Um, in terms of uh, 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 the suburbs, we're also seeing. People wanting to get into condos, townhomes, not only the single family detached and semi-detached homes, but I'm going to do a quick recap. The three market indicators that we like to look at um, and are very easy uh, uh, to find. And at any time, guys, if you want these stats yourself, uh, just shoot us an email um, uh, uh, at info at recanada.com and say you want a copy of these stats. We'll get that over to you. And I'm sure Tyler, Ty Ty Walburn, um, our air traffic controller is in the comments. Throw your questions in there. We'll do our best to get to them. So three market indicators that we like to look at is average price in terms of passive appreciation, what happened. We also like to look at months of inventory because the months of inventory always tell us is it a buyer's market a balanced market or a seller's market okay and how we determine that zero zero to three months of 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 months of inventory you're in a seller's market three and a half to uh, five and a half months you're in a balanced market 
six months and above, you're in a buyer's market. And then the third metric that we like to look at, the third market indicator is days on market because now we can kind of get an idea how long are homes actually staying on the market because then you'll be able to determine, hey, like if, if, if I look at a listing, for example, here in Toronto, the average days on market is 26 days. You know the next time, if you're thinking of selling, your home or your condo, it's going to take you on average about 26 days. Now, it could also take 52 days. It can take, it can be done in one hour because we're seeing a lot of multiple offers for single family homes, townhomes, condos in the Toronto market. So in Toronto, at the end of 2020, December 2020, we saw slightly under two months of inventory. What does that tell us again? That we're in a, we're definitely still in a seller's market. We don't have a lot of inventory and we still have people wanting homes. So the demand is very high. You're going to see this in all the, the stats that we bring up today, right across the GTA. And really the underlining for me, what I'm looking at the underlining factor, because like, why do we see so much demand still is because we've never seen interest rates as low as they are right now. Where I mean, you can get a five year. And every time I say this, somebody says, no, you can even get it lower. But it's a five year fix. You can get out in the market right now for about one point nine percent. 1.9% for five years. We always tell the story, right? So it looks like when I bought my first home in 2006, yeah, I perch I got an interest rate at four and a half percent for a five-year fixed rate. And I left the bank that day, or you know, with my brothers, and we were laughing. We thought we robbed the bank at four and a half percent, man. I mean, now to get at less than two percent. Well, well, and the reason people tell you you can get it lower is because you can. Like we're seeing like the common right now literally is one seven, one six which is mind boggling. Uh, but Jazzy, I wanted to touch on a couple of things. Yeah, Toronto uh, market, you said. So, so in, in Toronto, so if you look at the screen, uh, I still have the stat up. Toronto markets has 1.9 months of inventory, but there's a tiny little write up down there for anybody having a tough time. It ends with something like this. The average selling price was almost 12% to 986. To be accurate, it was 11.6. The average price in Toronto across all home types is literally 14K off a million bucks. The average in the city went up a hundred grand, six figures. Yeah. In a yeah. year, in a year where unemployment went skyrocketing due to the forced closure because of the virus in a year where millions of people's businesses are have been shattered or like d dilapidated at the very least those who were in i'm not going to say insightful those who were fortunate enough in their lives to have a piece of real estate under them can lay a little easier knowing that their real estate will hold them together. That real estate is, was, is, and will continue to be the one thing, that one real tangible thing that whether it's a virus you can't see, whether it's political unrest, whether it's whatever the case may be, when you wake up, it will be there. And look, to put that into context, 15 years ago, 15 years ago, if we pull up this exact same sheet, in Toronto, the average price was $335,000. So less than two decades, less than two decades, we've 3X'd the price of homes here in Toronto. So for anybody who's new in, in, the, in the buying slash investing process, that is where really, really the, the meat of investing happens is the fact that if you hold on to it, if you ride the wave, and we're going through it right now, specifically in the downtown core with condos, the, the people that sold, and I love that these are recorded because we're going to be able to pull this back in a year, five and 10 years from now, 
the people that sold because they got scared of the values that dipped in the downtown Toronto condo market are going to be kicking themselves. Why? How do we know that? Because it happens every single time. I've done it personally myself. I was a, I I sold a property back in two thousand in in in, in two thousand and six. The same. I bought a property, my first property. But just before that, my parents, the one that we lived in, we sold that. I was still licensed, but I was still new in the business. We sold that property. And are we ever kicking ourselves? Why? Because we sold it for $410,000. It's worth a little over a million dollars right now. We could have kept it. How? We, all we have to do is refinance it, pull out the equity, and buy the property that we did. And so anyways, um, I think I think anybody who, who has held on to their properties for a very long time, I'm sure you agree with this sentiment. Simos, let's move uh, over to- I, I have one Oprah. last thing. I have one yeah. last thing. Uh, be, because I had at least three people uh, reach out to me over the last week speaking directly about condos, uh, but I don't want to speak about uh, their, their fears, which were unfounded. Um, the, everybody has a right to be worried, but every single investor- uh, and every single person has access uh, to the Google and everybody has access to the REC. And when you're wondering how to interpret data, we are here for that reason. We don't sugarcoat anything ever. So I want to point down to a fact that inside the Toronto market, uh, in where it says condo corner, bottom left, condo sales in December were up <laughs> 75% year over year. The price was down 4.6%. So if anybody is wondering how to interpret that, when sales are up 75% year over year, so last December, there was no COVID. This December, there was COVID. So this is a pre-COVID to post-COVID fact. And during a second lockdown or pre-lockdown where things were going bad, we saw a flurry of activity like no other December. To boot in a market that has been punished by the virus, meaning they shut down every office tower, every club, every restaurant, every lounge, everything. It has nothing to do with the market. It has to do with the virus. The government locked the downtown core down. In a market where rents are down 15%, prices and equity has only gone down less than 5%. Why? Why is downtown so resilient that a year of punishment, it still stands strong? The okay. real story, the real story lies in the media because Bobby yesterday was listening to a podcast and it was out of New York. And it said, the media here says, oh, people are leaving downtown in droves. No, they're not. In all of New York, a city of 15 million or whatever the hell New York is, Manhattan, Eight there was 80,000 th 80, address changes. It might sound a lot if you're from Barrie, because your city is 100,000, that would be leaving in droves. But in a city of 8 million, it represents what? 1%? What are we talking about? Now, now, really quickly on, 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 on the fact that um, the values dropped by 4% in December, if we pulled up the November no, that, report, you would see you would see a 10.2 or 10.4% decrease. So you're starting to see the prices come back up. When we say it's rebounded in November of 2020, the exact same uh, condo corner on the piece of paper that I don't know if the, sh the screen still shares. Yeah, more. this but is always way, year over year. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so, and so in November, we saw... November 2020 compared to November 2019 was 10.4% decrease. December 2020 compared to December 2019, we saw a difference of 4.6%. You're starting to see the consumer confidence come back into the market. And it happens a lot. I mean, we've seen this before. When people start to leave and they're scared, the investors come in. Because, you know, the great, great Warren Buffett said, when everyone is fearful, that's a time to be greedy. And, you know, greedy is maybe not the best word, but I think everybody understands the context that he was saying it in. And, and, and when everyone is greedy and everyone's jumping on something, time that is maybe the time to be fearful. <laughs> so I want to make sure that we give the, the audience what we promised them, which is let's move on to Oakville, which I know is near and dear to your heart, brother. Um, you spent what? 
half a decade, maybe more there, seven years there. I forget. Uh, se- the seven years there. Yeah. Seven it's, years there. So, Talk about Oakville. Yeah. So, so Oakville is one for the ages. I mean, the Oakville market, what, what it's done uh, the last three years, uh, but what it's done in this last year is just, uh, it, it just really brings drives home uh, the point that people will always appreciate a, a bigger, cleaner, um, tidier environment. Oakville is known to be probably every year rotates between uh, pretty much Burlington and Oakville as to the best place in Canada to live. And the reason for that, Oakville is situated on the water. For those outside of the GTA, Oakville is situated on Lake Ontario. Uh, it, it has probably about a 20 kilometer uh, uh, length across the water, and it goes about five to seven kilometers north um, in, into the Niagara and Scarpment at one point. Actually, not not, not the Niagara, that, that's more brilliant touches there, but it goes north into Milton. And, and it's just, when I say stunning, it's well taken care of. Uh, there's a very, it's a high income city, uh, like on, on the average. So it's no coincidence that we've seen a 20% growth year over year. We used to be at a million bucks last year. We're at one, two, four, six. Yep. A million yep. two fifty to get into an average home in Oakville. So um, a big kudos to, 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 to the councillors who have maintained that city, to, to, to the state that it is. Uh, a big kudos to the developers bringing more housing into that market. And of course, a huge note to every... Uh, every resident citizen and investor into that market for, for creating an environment for so many people to call home. We were, we were involved um, in what four launches in Oakville last year. Yep. Not yep. big, not big investor ones, but like we, we took part in district. We took part in nouveau. We took part in a bunch of new developments. Yeah. You're where, starting to see a lot more condo projects come out there as well right now. Of course, um, because of affordability. Of townhomes. Yeah. For, for sure. Because of affordability. So, yep. so the only reason for that is be, not everybody can afford one 1.25 mil to get a home, but they want to live in Oakville. They want that clean air, beautiful walking trail lifestyle, and they can find that for half that price in a condo. And 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 if you look at the, the, the I don't know if you're sharing these still, Seamus. Like um, I'm on my phone, so I, I, yeah, I, I don't am. really go I am. You're, okay, perfect. So uh, um, you mentioned uh, the average price, uh, the months of inventory there. Months of inventory. Like- what 1.07 um, days on market, 33 days, and a number of uh, sales. We had, uh, I think this may be a record, uh, 3,500 3, sales up 11%. Okay. And if, if everyone looks at that bottom corner there, um, when you see the increase in the condo market in terms of average price, it was a 38% uh, <laughs> year over year increase in the condo market. And so people think that, okay, there's no values in condos. I mean, we do all real estate. I mean, first and foremost, Seamus and I are investors. First and foremost, we're trying to create wealth in real estate ourselves, generational wealth to, to leave it for our families. Um, well, I always say if my two boys treat me well and depends how they, they take care of daddy will determine what they're left with. But on a, I, got, I, I digress. Um, um, uh, so Oakville, I mean, obviously, because there's because uh, of affordability, people want to be there. The, the school districts are one of the best in the country. People want to be in Oakville, but it's hard to get in even with the help of the, the bank of mom and dad to get in with a, an average price point of 1.2 million. So what do you do? You look at what's more affordable. Average price for a condo in Oakville right now is 775,000. Let's chat it up about Mississauga. I mean, that's where uh, just, you just, live. Yeah, just before we go to Saga, because Oakville's so hot, uh, we don't have any large scale projects on our pipeline, in our pipeline on our horizon for Oakville. Uh, but if anyone is interested in really uh, delving into that market and looking for some opportunity, I definitely am extremely well connected uh, with the, those low and mid-rise developers in the Oakville Burlington corridor. Uh, we're literally consulting on a on a seniors' home in in Hamilton right now, design built from 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 the beginning stages. But uh, we we have a lot of deep relationships out there. If anybody's looking for opportunities out there, uh, shoot, shoot Tyler a quick call. Um, or, or a message. Email. And, just uh, email and, at info at REC Canada. Just Make an it easy email. On yourself. And, and, and we can always connect you to, to one of our experts on the ground, and uh, I can have a consultation anytime. 
and, okay, and, and, well, it's, and, it's, and it's really quick. Just that email, you can literally put it in the, just put whatever you want in the subject line. Don't take too much time. We'll do the heavy lifting. Tyler will reply back. If he needs your phone number or something more specific, yeah. he'll reply back. Just put what you want in the subject line. Make it very easy. Don't spend too much time away from your screen right now because you see us too. So we don't want you to leave and be and not come <laughs> back. Let's go to Mississauga. Um, you know, we, 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 we have an office in Mississauga um, with, for the last uh, five years years now coming up to you did get brunch man that's what i missed with the fact that we weren't doing this live from our studio today um i'm i'm doing the hot water and lemon you obviously have the spread great job why don't you send that caroline over, send, hey hey shout out to caroline um why don't you send that over through uber eats or, or skip the dishes or, or something um mrs saga months of inventory actually less slightly but less than what we're seeing in Oakville. Why do we see that? Just less inventory, more demand. You don't have as many homes, the numbers are telling us, you don't have as many homes that are readily <coughs> becoming available on the market. And so you have one month of inventory average, average now, Average is lower than Oakville. And so let's dive into this a little bit. Right now we're at 880,000, okay? Um, why? Well, you have a lot more variety in Mississauga than you would in Oakville. Oakville well, is just also five times, a, five times the population. A hundred percent, right? But you also, have now, now, now you, you have a lot more condos available. You have a lot more smaller townhomes. Like in Oakville, very hard pressed to get like a one bedroom townhome or even a two bedroom townhome. There is an Oakville, but not many. They usually scale out to be a little bit larger. In Mississauga, you have thousands of smaller townhomes. And so that's why, again, it's a little bit more affordable to get into Mississauga, um, great school districts. You know, I think Mississauga and the GTA um, is still bit, like rated probably in the top three, top four places to buy, live and invest. Average days on market, you're at 25 days on market. Anything you want to touch on, my brother, on Mississauga? Uh, it, it's just been an explosive market. Like, I mean, it brings me great pleasure to see uh, average prices up 16%. Um, I live in Mississauga. I'm I'm uh, over at Britannia and Credit View, and the in East Credit is like I'm a Streetsville East Credit. So uh, I live in like truly a blessed neighborhood. It's gorgeous. I'm on walking trails. And to know that in the last year, uh, my home, uh, my personal residence has performed this well. It's just something that it just brings you pleasure. So blessings on blessings. That's my comment. Um, next, we're going to go to Brampton where all my paisans are and where I live. All my Indian, Indian friends, majority of them are in the northern part of Brampton. Um, it's where I live on the north. And, and what a story. Um, what a story. Not surprising. I'm actually really not surprised only because I've been watching Brandon for such a very, like for such a long time. I have so many, I have so many clients and family members here. Um, I always laugh and tell the story that within probably a five, five kilometer radius, no exaggeration to anybody who's watching within a five kilometer radius here in Brampton, I think I have a little over 110 blood relatives, Seamus, believe it or not, like 110 blood relatives, not just people that we call uncle in, which we do anyways in our culture a lot, but um, like actual blood relatives. So I watch this market, I get asked about it all the time, months of inventory, less than half, well, almost less than half a month. I mean, this is, this is crazy, um, but again, not surprising. Why? A, we have a lot of homes in Brampton that have basement apartments. There is amazing value in these properties because a lot of them have already been built to have that second in-law suite, the in-law suite, uh, the income property, call it what you want to call it. There's a lot of properties in Brampton that actually have two in, uh, in-law suites in the basement. It is really an investor haven because you still have a lot of transit um, and the population growth is be, is massive and has been massive in the last couple of years. We've seen an average increase on values by a little over 15% to get to uh, $840,000 right now at an average price. And mark, days on market is only 20 days on market. And so you're not really staying on the market a long time. One of our team members, I think a week ago, so, Saturday, yes, I think it was Saturday or Sunday, uh, Sumit, uh, he, he went into an offer with 64 uh, buyers that actually put in an offer, which means, which means 
a little over 250 to 300 people saw this home in a four day window. So home and up, the seller and their agent said, we want to put this, we want to get offers on a specific date and time. It was a four day window, 250 to 300 people went and saw it and 64 people actually put in an offer. And so that is what's happening in certain areas in the GTA. Um, I definitely think, I mean, Brampton and the next place that we're going to talk about, Durham, have, have definitely seen seen the lowest in terms of months of inventory. And for me, that is the metric that I like to look at because now I know what's going to start to happen with values. If you drop us anywhere in the world, in any city in the world, these are the three metrics that we're going to look at. And that first one is 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 really months of inventory because it just tells us what type of market we're in. So what I want to what I want to impress upon our, our our audience this morning in our community is sometimes you need to look dig a little bit deeper and peel the onion a few layers in. And and I want to talk about Brampton, which is a very heavily Indian population. Why do I want to do that? What do Indians or any mass immigration culture do when they first come to Canada. They typically will come with family. They will sponsor family. They will live together to save money. The exact same story every wave of mass immigration did. So what did Indians do? What are they, what, what do Torontonians make fun of Indians for? Living together in the same house, right? Ha ha ha. Two, three years later though, when all those new immigrants have opened up the restaurants, started the hair salons, went to work in factories, and prosperity starts creeping in, and they're becoming a part of the fabric of the country, and they're progressing, what is the first thing that any human being does? I don't care if they were a Greek immigrant, Indian immigrant, Japanese immigrant, German immigrant, what is the first thing you do when you can? You buy a home. So in a market during COVID, again, we're talking about a time where everything comes to a screeching halt, a population that has been sitting on money because the said demographic has been saving every bean that they can for the last few years. The minute they see an anomaly in the marketplace, just like anyone else, because they're smart, the money is cheap, they can borrow 1.7, they're out buying Brampton right now. So it's not a coincidence that Toronto has a 2% month of inventory and Brampton is sitting at 0.37. Sometimes we can go beyond the headlines, beyond the stats, and think why. This is why. Because when you say there's two income suites in the basement, those people can't wait for the day to say, here's my notice, I bought a home, just like anyone else. Oh, and that's gonna, and the story gonna, of Brampton. And they're going to look for a property just like my parents did um, when they came to Canada in 1974. They rented. They rented in a basement. Then they got an apartment. And then they bought their first home. But that first home that they bought, they they understood that they needed to have a basement apartment in it to offset the cost. There's myself and two older brothers. Mother and father's household income was probably nothing more. Factory worker, mother, the taxi driver, father, household income, maybe nothing like I would probably say about $65,000, right? $65,000. No, I, I, I just like to bring up the point, Jazzy, because people don't see, but like, I'm I'm a guy who needs to understand why things happen the way they do. So, so like, it's easy to say, yeah. oh, yeah, it's, uh, oh, it's the Chinese buying them. Uh, no, yeah. it's not. It's our Torontonians from Markham buying them. Or sure. it's, uh, I just hate that shit. So whenever <laughs> yeah. I can, so like when, when the stats are so blatantly clear, and and, and and they separate themselves, um, the stats separate themselves so clearly, it's good for people to know what's happening and why. This is why. So let's go, let's move over to, and, and, and it's the last uh, city we're going to speak about today. And then we'll take some questions in the comments. Maybe Seamus, you can scroll in the comments section there, see if there's any comments um, or, or questions uh, that yeah, we can so, address. So, so, so to our audience, we apologize. Normally, we would have double the amount of uh, people on, but because of the lockdown, we had to shift back to home so quickly. Next week, uh, we're, we're definitely hoping to have the offices uh, back, like where we can actually go and work 
uh, separately in the office and have a safe environment, but we just have to figure everything out and have our, nor our people normally going into the comments. Um, let me go in because I'm going to act and pretend that I'm Bobby, Tyler, and Simeon. <laughs> While you're doing that, we're going to speak about Durham. And then you just stop me, Simos, if you see something where someone had a question. Um, so just give me or, one second. It's, a, it's go good ahead. morning. Nice cities. We love you all. Okay. Um, the screen is blurry. Sorry. Breaking and news. if you don't mind, guys, take a second. Give us a, 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 red, a red heart if you're agreeing with us right now in terms of the, long, the way to create long-term wealth in real estate. And um, if, if, if you're not agreeing with us, give us a blue like. Blue like uh, if you don't really agree with us and a red, red uh, heart if you do agree with us. Let's get this screen lit up. Um, any questions that we should address? Yeah. Most are no, no, no big questions, uh, but I'm not surprised. We've kind of really gone over the stats and we've saved the biggest story of all for last. Uh, the the record-breaking Dura market that finally has solidified itself and found its uh, way to 700K average price. Take it away, Jazzy. Yeah, look, I mean, um, for me, as I mentioned, I've been watching Brampton because I've lived here now for the last uh, uh, five years or four years or something like that in the family that I have. But the real area that I've been always kept keeping an, an eye on, um, specifically in the last decade, has been Durham because um, it's on the east side and everyone's always talking about the west side and the north, like the Berries, um, um, Hamilton, Burlington. And then when you speak about Mississauga and Oakville, they, you kind of just get priced out. And so the area that I've always been interested in is Durham because I know that the GO train goes there. Like right now you can use the GO train, you can get on the GO train from Pickering, Ajax, Whitby, Oshawa, and the growth in value year over year that I've seen in this, in this area, but not having a lot of investors move in because most investors just don't know about Durham. And there's always been, specifically about Oshawa, there's always been some type of stigma about it, but that's changing now. And that's probably had a massive shift in, 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 in the thought process of investors where you're starting to see now you're, that's why you're at an average, average house price of over $700,000, an increase year over year of 15%. I mean, we run performers all the time. And we were ultra, ultra conservative at, at 5%. We laugh and say, you know what? Well, even if it's at 3%, how good are you doing? I mean, how well are you doing, right? And now to see 15.6% increase in Durham, I'm just so excited for all the clients of ours that did get into Durham in the last five to 10 years. Because, and I'm sure if, if you're watching right now, please let us know in the comments that you're one of the guys or gals that did invest. I mean, I, I'm thinking of at least 50 to 60 people in the last three years that we did business and transactions in Durham for income properties where, where you can get in. And, you know, five years ago, you could, got, you could have got into Durham for about $450,000, like even less maybe, but right around that $400,000 mark. Um, and now to see, Le, uh, three, uh, 0.37 uh, 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 days of, uh, of sorry, uh, months of inventory, 20 days on, on market, and the GO train expanding into Durham even further outside of Oshawa is very exciting for me. Um, and, and that's all I really have to say about Durham right now, man. I mean, if you guys are not looking at it and thinking about it, please reach out to us. We'll get you information on all the stats, but I'm sure you had uh, uh, something to say about Durham as well, Simos. Uh, I do, man. So, so uh, uh, unlike uh, Oakville, where I said earlier, we, we don't have a lot in our pipeline in that market. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the REC Insiders, I think most of them know for the new people that you do, if you don't know how we do our due diligence, is unless the project is priced within the parameters of our pro forma. Uh, if you don't know what a pro forma is, it's a one page analysis, breaks down an investment, purchase price, rental, return, expenses, et cetera, get, deriving at a number. Uh, what Jazz mentioned a second ago is prices went up by 15%. Uh, when we um, are, are lucky and fortunate um, and blessed enough to handle your transaction for you, we will never use a number like that we use 5%, even though it's a lower uh, number and, it's, and it hasn't been 5% in over uh, 20 years. It's been 7%, 8 6 what have you. Uh, but we're not going to use 15%. So Oakville, we don't have anything on the go. In Durham, um, my friends, we do. 
So basically, we're in the la- in the very literally the very last stages of due diligence on a massive. This is a teaser, I suppose, uh, because if next week uh, we ha- we have a launch going on, we were successful. If we are talking about uh, the market, we weren't. So we're hoping to be able to bring an opportunity home uh, next next week. Uh, not next weekend for you guys, the thirtieth. Um, so no, no, sorry, Simos. Just, just so you know, it might, it might. If, if. Well, it depends. If, if I, if I do, diligence. if I do my job, if, yeah. if I successfully negotiate, it'll, it'll happen. So yeah. I'll tell you guys what. What's happening in Durham is this: if you look at the stats on this very page, there was forty-four condo sales in all of Durham for a one hundred and twenty percent increase, meaning three times. So last year in December, there was only fifteen condos that changed hand in December. The reason you only see such the small numbers in the condo sector in Durham is because there is it's a it's a 100% bedroom communities meaning Pickering, Ajax, Whitby, Oshawa. You you can buy a townhouse or you can buy a semi detached for the same that you could buy a condo in the city. So it's not the preferred method. But also now what we're seeing is again affordability as the prices have crept up to 700,000 for the average home in Durham. Condos are now being built on every corner. Does every condo make sense? The answer is no. You need to be placed within a five-minute radius to the GO train. You need to be close to highways. You need to be close to employment nodes. You need to be close to educational nodes. Oshawa has two universities. Whitby has uh, post-secondary education. Durham Live, which is the entertainment casino complex, etc., so the GM Durham, plant that just reopened up again, right? My man, my man, the GM plant, we have massive news. They're going to be producing electric batteries. So we have a massive positive outlook mounting in the Durham region. And we have identified a site uh, just east of Oshawa um, with a developer that's built half of the Durham region, literally. They've, they've done like 75 projects out there. And uh, if we successfully, like, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that because I don't. Yeah, I was going to say leave it at that only because in uh, case, in case the right. last. And I don't want to jinx it due anyway. Diligence. Yeah, right. So the last I don't two parts of due, the last two parts of due diligence don't yeah. don't come to a close. That's right. Um, we are looking at actually three projects in total, but it all comes down to at the end of the day, are we going to get it at first access prices? Are we going to get the units? Are they going to allow us? to select the units for our investors, um, as well as are we going to get the incentives, letting us uh, uh, right. sign it in case we have to, and most importantly, the dep- the down payment structure. Um, if though, if you have um, uh, uh, approximately $20,000 um, available within the next 30 days, you might want to look at this um, because I, in a year on, on a 40 you would leave deposits of about $40,000 in a year's time, a 12 month rolling time. You're going to see a part very close to about a hundred percent return. You heard me right. A hundred percent return on those deposits on that 40,000. If again, we're successful, just make sure you're getting our emails. If this project works great, if it doesn't, who cares? But is as long as you're getting our emails, So at least you're aware of it. Um, and yep. so the easiest way to get that is at REC insiders.com. You just got to fill out a quick form because we practice permission-based marketing. We will not spam you. Um, and, 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 or if you have any questions about anything we spoke about today, or even heard us in the past, or you want us to connect you to one of our realtors, all you have to do, if you're part of uh, the insiders already, just shoot that email in info at REC Canada uh, to Ty Ty and Tyler will make sure as our air traffic controller, he'll get through um, all the emails that we generally get during a weekly basis. Um, just stay patient. We, patient, we will definitely get back to you. In closing, I would like to say that the GTA market, so all the cities we spoke about, um, at the end of 2020, it was a it, it, it was the third highest in amount of sales that happened. We topped off with a little over 93,000 sales in, in the GTA market. Um, it just talks about, and you used the word earlier, Simos, it was uh, resiliency, right? I mean, how resilient did the greater Toronto market stay? I mean, 93,000, third highest ever 
ever recorded in the hundred years of the Toronto Real Estate Board um, that that where they've been uh, getting and collecting this data. And and it always, always to me, it comes down to supply and demand. We still have yes, we don't have the people coming in because the borders are closed. When that happens, guys, the borders reopen. It's going to be, you know, for a lack of a better word, a shit show. Because why? We also haven't been developing. Construction has been slightly halted in certain site for, for certain sure. sites. Majorly Appli- affected. Majorly Appli- affected. Applications haven't been being getting processed for development sites at all. And so you're going to have all these people come in and we're not going to be able to provide the housing. What's going to happen to values? It's just going to go up. Seamus, so, anything so from Jazz, your perspective, buddy? I, Jazz, I want you to restructure that quote because I want that to be. So I want this quote right here that you just said to be part of our history. You just said when that border opens up and those planes start flying in, it's going to be a shit show. Bang. Put that in hundred percent. I I feel the exact same way. I think there's going to be like a, a like a big can of kerosene on top of a can of a campfire is exactly what's going to happen because we are nowhere near ready to to to, to take in the four hundred thousand people Trudeau wants to bring in. And, and we are going to make more money than anybody could ever imagine. Well, yeah, I think it's that, that game is going to yeah. make money, boy. Money. That's important what you just said. Like whoever, the time is not going to be to get in when all that is happening because then values have gone up, right? And right. so the time is always to get in before. Um, this is not a show about making you uh, spend money uh, <laughs> with us or anything. It's really just a, like we try to bring the facts. And also these facts and I'm calling them facts, um, what we spoke about with the stats, they don't just come from Seamus and I. It's not just our opinion. Yes, we we, we, we definitely throw in our opinions um, because we eat, breathe, sleep real estate in the greater Toronto area. Um, but these are the, like we get to sit down because of all the media and, and the content that we produce. We get to sit down with some of the most – like the. The, the most brilliant minds in our country, Benjamin Tall, senior economist, 30 years, three decades with uh, a CIBC senior economist. We get to sit down like with two gentlemen like Michael Saracini and Scott McGilvery who have been investing for I don't even know how long and how many doors they have anymore. I don't even they've think they teaching, know how many doors they they've have. They've been teaching investing for a decade. Right. They've been teaching. Exactly. And they've been <laughs> investing for so long. Um, uh, uh, Chris Slidem broker a record of, of, of one of uh, uh, the biggest franchises in the country, a roller page signature. Um, uh, he, Phil Soper, his, Tim Hudak. Who, who the list goes on and on. And so that's where it comes from. I hope it's always valuable. Please. Excuse me. We're big boys, as you can tell in the screens here. We're probably taking up both of the screens here. We can handle constructive criticism. Please let us know what topics you would like us to cover in 2021 in these brunches, what speakers you would like us to bring on, what opportunities you would like us to to bring on as well, Um, and any other feedback. Like Maybe it might just be like, Jazz, can you just shut up once in a while? We don't want to hear you talk. That might be it, and I can handle that as well. (laughs) You'll take a Um, week off. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I'll take three days off. Maybe. Um, other than that, I mean, I, I hope everyone has an amazing weekend. Let's do our part to stay to to I hate to use this word, but flatten the curve again. Uh, um, uh, uh, just do your part. I mean, uh, we're very blessed in real estate that it is an essential service. Um, so real estate is allowed. Seamus, why don't you just quickly touch on that, actually, because I know you've been yeah, talking so, so, so to our realtors. Out- what are we allowed to do and what we're not allowed to yeah, do? Talk so, about so, that. So, so first and foremost, to everyone out there, uh, I know me and Jazz, we don't have a choice. We have a, an army of people that, that work uh, uh, with us uh, in, in, in the trenches every day. So am I going to be going to the office this week? Um, not Not to work for 10 hours, but I do have to go in and out, drop off deposits, move money, get paperwork done. Um, we chose to do this brunch today from home uh, because we need to have our cleaning crew. Uh, so basically what me and Jazz do is we have uh, separate areas in the office. I'm in the Mississauga office. Typically, he's at Don Mills. And basically, we're going to have our areas and the outside of our area sanitized. And none of our staff, including our, our own salespeople, are going to be coming in and out of the office. So basically, uh, in Mississauga, I'm going to have Bobby. On your side, there's going to be our director of sales, Laura. There's going to be uh, a couple of the video producers, uh, so socially distanced. So we're doing everything we can to stay 
uh, safe and not put anybody at risk. Um, for all of those out there who don't have a choice, who are kind of in our position, and you have to go out to any people on the front line, we wish you the absolute most courage and uh, patience um, to, to, to make do with what you have. Stay safe. Don't allow people to, to, to don't feel bad to, to ask someone to step back. Um, it, it Like I go into a meeting that's worth, when I'm negotiating this development in Bowmanville, and, and the old man who's been in construction forever wants to, to he's a clothes talker. You know what I mean? Sorry, bro. Like, if, if this is going to kill my deal, I don't want to go home and get my kids sick right now. So, so, like, literally, like, don't be scared to ask someone to step back. It's not bad etiquette. It's not a joke. People are dying every day. So at this point, if anybody's still talking like COVID is a joke, please stop. Have respect for our frontline workers because I have many friends and clients who are there. I'm, I'm selling a medical building, so I'm talking to doctors every day. This is not a joke. It's not a political opinion. Treat it with respect. Let's flatten this curve so we can one day just get back to normal and live our lives the way we want. What's my little villain man doing there? They think I'm only talking to you right now. I <laughs> it's love not you, just boy. like the Simos. There's other friends of ours watching. Where? Right? Where? So you can't see them right now, though, on the screen. As everyone can see, the boys here. Um, I'm over. not gonna let Daddy do a lot more work. I couldn't have been any Daddy, better timing. Can I hear what they're saying? One second, buddy. I love everyone that's watching. Thank you for your support. Simos, love you, my man. We'll talk soon. Everybody, be safe. Be safe. We'll see you in a week or two.